Hey everybody, welcome to the Bruinsis podcast. Today we have with us on the show Melissa Valley and her daughter Aria, and I'm really excited for it. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm so excited about the guest we have today. Uh, like Melissa, I've done some, something absolutely absolutely phenomenal with her daughter education. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to what they're going to have to share with us today on the show. So Melissa and Aria, can you introduce yourself, please? You want to introduce yourself first? You go first. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Melissa Valley, and um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, yeah. and uh, we are using a tool called TechnoTutor to homeschool and educate. Aria, you want to introduce yourself? Hi. What's your name? Yeah. Aria? Yeah. How old are you? Five. Awesome. Do you, what, what do you do to learn? TechnoTutor. TechnoTutor. Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> so, Melissa, to start, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background and basically where you were before TT? And you can also share about the area as well. If she wants to share. So, um, I do want to share. You do want to share? What do you want to share? After you go. Okay, okay after I go. So, um, prior to me getting techno tutor, I was working with families more in the um, healing modalities and helping them and supporting as far as emotional balance and finding out why parents were struggling with their kids behavior. And um, I just hit a point where I was like, okay, um, we're helping the kids, but it's not really solving the root cause. And it's really not, it's only kind of putting band-aids on the problems but nothing is still really like permanently changing and so there was a question a two-way question first it was like well is it me right because you have that ego but then I was like no like it can't be that everybody is on the same boat um so then 2020 hit and I decided to go since we all had to be online I decided to go and find as many people that I could that use different modalities uh, to support children. And I'm talking about from like essential oils to like breathing and, and yoga and, and everything you can think of. And one of them was Drake, who's uh, one of the techno uh, distributors. And I said, hey, Drake, can you come on, on our weekly show and just like kind of share a little bit about, te about techno tutor? And in that moment, it just like, it hit me like, this is the solution. Like, we all have all these little things that we want to solve, but this solves the root. And then from there, it just essentially everything else gets solved. And I just, but then I had a resistance to using it, right? <laughs> because like we all, you know, we want to solve everybody else's problems, but we don't want to solve our own. Um, so that, that was me uh, still trying to get, you know, people to um, uh, be able to solve the problems with their kids. And specifically, like, I remember having uh, children who I realized that I work with that the main issue was their parent or both of their parents. Mm -hmm. And they would send me their kids like, hey, here, you know, this kid it, like has so many autoimmune diseases and so forth, or this child has autism or whatever it is, and we can't do anything. Or the behavior is so bad. I had uh, one parent who was like, it's to the point where I'm going to send my six-year-old to a, uh, what is it, that? like a boarding school where they send them away. Uh, and I was like, whoa, like, but he's six, right? Like there's something here that's not equating. Mm -hmm. um, so that was prior to TechnoTutor. And then once I got TechnoTutor and I started using within myself and I realized that, oh my God, yes, whatever I thought from just that interview, and then I applied it within myself, it's equal because I am changing within myself. So that was the prior. Awesome. Thank you. You, want to uh, you, you kind of, that? oh yeah, go ahead, Kara. You want to talk? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I was about to ask you. You kind of already touched on the point. Uh, I was about to ask you, like, what inspired you to get TT? So for you, like, it seems once you saw it, it was pretty clear that like this is the answer. Can you expand a little bit on this point? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in a lot of 
energy healing and modalities, you focus on the result, on the consequence, right? So you're always never ending and you're, it's never ending search of, oh, I need to solve this. So I'm going to use, you know, this meditation and I need to make money. So I'm going to use this thing and I'm going to need to solve all my past lives or whatever it is that comes up. And there's this hundred million tools and meditations and energy and modalities. And, you know, I, I'm talking about to the point where I learned to through psychedelics. I mean, everything I did it all. Mm -hmm. And it was nothing was completely resolving the problem from the root it was still coming up it was almost like pretend that it's not there and because you did this thing you got to really pretend that it's not there because why else did you do it right but it was still there um and so same thing with my clients it was like okay well they're they tell me that they're better but they're not because this other things are coming up that are still sprouting from the main thing that we were working on. So it's still not solved. And I realized it, it can't, there's got to be something created that will solve all the problems from the root. That's it. Awesome. That's really cool. Be amazing. Uh, so you said that Technicuter like worked pre pretty well for you. And you said that, yes, this is a tool for change that works for me and your daughter as well. So can you just share a little bit about what change did you experience for you and also for Aria? Absolutely. Um, so specifically for me, I had a lot of issues with anxiety. I had issues with communication. I had issues with um food. Oh my God, that was a big one. Uh, and it's almost like you know that they're there, but you've learned to cope with them. So they've become normal in your life. And until you actually process that and actually understand that, yes, I'm having that and be honest, self-honest with yourself, then you don't actually change them, right? And so I'll start with Aria because that's kind of how I began to discover all of these. Um, because through children, especially when you have children, they, also have to do you want to say yours? Yeah, after you say after I say mine, thing. okay. So especially when you have children, you one more thing. One more thing, um, you have to you have you get to see everything about you right there in front of you, and it's like in your face, right? And with her, it's she had the eating issues, she had anxiety, she had fears. Hey, yeah. Well, you're gonna talk about them, and I'll just give the the <laughs> the bullet points. Okay. And, um, and, and by recognizing that she had that and she spends basically all day with me and most of the night. So basically her whole life, who is she picking it up from? Mm -hmm. hey. Right. So I had to solve it within myself in order to support her. So she's going to share it. Right. Yeah. Okay. I realized that. You don't want to say, share? Okay, you want me to share for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, with uh, the eating, I started seeing how she, it was really can hard I say for her. one part? You can say one part. Go ahead. No, still five, then this rice and the chicken doesn't, doesn't taste good, and, and I just keep pushing it away, but I was too hungry. Mm -hmm. But then you tried it, and then it was fine, right? Yeah. No. No, it wasn't fine. It wasn't fine when it still begged me. Well, yeah, because I begged you because I was like, you got to eat something, right? I, said, I keep saying sandwich and you keep the nuts in. Yeah, sandwich. not a sandwich that day. So um, we, she wouldn't just eat like um chicken fingers and then... I'm taking a break. Uh, well, now we're taking a break from chicken fingers. But when she was three, she would only eat chicken fingers and um, snacks right because it was like snack. All TV. yeah snack, snack snack pretzels and i, I still eat pretzels yeah, when you were little but i still eat them when i'm five yeah you still eat them and um so i was like okay i can't get her to eat anything and then i started asking myself like wait a minute why can't i get her to eat and then i started using techno tutor and really inputting all the information that was coming for me and it was Hey, uh, when she was a baby, 
and you try to give her food and every baby does this, they'll be like, because it's something new, right? And I'm like, oh, she doesn't want it. Oh no, I can't keep trying because she doesn't want it. And I'm like, okay, but why did I feel that way? Well, I went back to me being a child. And when we had to eat, it was like you sit at the table, you don't get up until you're done. And if you don't eat your food, then you get the belt and you get hit until you eat it. But it wasn't like you got hit and then you don't eat it. No, it was like you get hit and then you still have to eat it, right? So like, uh, a lot of memories started coming up for me and realizing how bad of a relationship I had with food. So then in order to support her, I needed to support myself first. And once I neutralized per se that within me, then I was able to support her and help her to start eating other foods. Cause it was the, the, the reaction wasn't there. And even at the beginning, um, I could still see, for example, like uh, one time my husband said to her, offer her like, Hey, do you want a sandwich with ham? And, and potato chips inside it. And, dip, and dip potato chips. And I was in the kitchen and I, I realized I was doing this because I was cringing. Like, she's going to say, no, she's going to say, no, she's going to say, no. Like my, my body was already had already integrated the fact that you have to reject like new things or, you know, and then I go back and do more process on that because it's not just food. It's everything that was created from that, that I had to work through so that I could effectively support her. That, that, that is like a, an incredible story. And it's like you mentioned, has you seen like a lot, uh, lot of parents that have like problem with child? Most, most of the time it's like the, the parents are the issue, but they don't realize it. So it's like, it's yeah. so cool because that story is really showing that point of like you solve that issue within yourself. And then like yeah. what happened? Like, is she still eating like only... So You can, uh, so right now, I mean, I can freely say steak, chicken, rice, um, banana, not pizza. solid, not solid yet. We did yeah. try it, but not solid yet. Yeah. Um, we did yeah. try cucumbers for a while. Yeah, I I only like the juice. She only likes the juice of the cucumber. So cucumber. Uh, we do eggplant. Um, I I do not like eggplant, but you still eat it. Yeah, because yeah, I know. And uh, what else? Chicken, cauliflower chicken. chicken uh so like there's a variety of things where i'm like okay she's not going to starve to death and there's enough nutrients and everything Cheetos. going in right Cheetos are not yeah. um sandwiches yeah and so like understanding also that eating itself is a process you have to try it you have to get your palate used to this but if you have a resistance that automatically says oh rejection no i can't take this you don't even support the child through that process and so like one of the things that i tell people okay yeah. one uh, is now i have to walk back what i've already created and then yeah. not only walk her back but then again teach her how to do it correctly uh -huh. and so the more you wait and not supporting Whoa. your child effectively, the more you're going to have to walk back. Yeah. And so imagine, imagine that was when she was three and I'm still walking it and she's five. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Um, it's, it really show like, um, uh, also like the point of like, you took responsibility for that point. Like most parents, it's almost, oh, it's like, it's the child problem and they don't see how they participate in that point themselves. So yeah, that's a, that's an amazing story. I remember the first time, the first time I heard that story, I was blown away. I was like, wow, really show the power of like, when you have the tool and you're able like to bring yourself to the understanding of like, what is like the actual cause of that. And then you can solve that and you, and even like, if you've done quotes mistake, you can correct them within yourself. And then you don't have like to, uh, like that pattern is not going to just perpetuate itself with the child. So this is a, uh, this is awesome. Can you um can you talk a little bit about uh, like I've seen many many videos that you post with the uh, Alia uh, on Facebook like in terms of like like she's do she's doing some amazing thing like I I see she, like she played a violin she's do like all thing that is like it's not things that are a five years old is uh usually doing so can you talk a little bit about the uh, Yeah, what, like what are you doing with her in the context, like maybe like an academic context, if we can use this word. And uh, 
And like, how is this different than putting her in school? Like, what, what's going to be the difference that you see? I mean, you can already see through the videos how amazing that is. But one of the things that has blown my mind a lot is um, I don't have to say, well, you are in kindergarten, so you have to learn like this and this and the coins and thing. And like, there's no structure. She's not sitting in front of a, a desk all day. And so that's already major. But, I, and I think I share this, for example, she was interested in learning about the body because she got sick one time and then we started talking about it. And then that spurred the idea, well, I want to learn how the body works and why do people get sick? And then like, so then we became like, okay, let's learn about everything about the body. And uh, one day we went to a museum and I went with my stepdaughter and she started telling my stepdaughter who at the time was 15 or 15. And, um, she said, you know, did you know that we have the frontal lobe and the, in the, in the cerebellum? And did you know when I do ballet, I'm using my cerebellum and blah. And my stepdaughter <laughs> looks and said, I'm learning that right now. Like she is, she was in 10th grade and she was in high school and she was learning what Ari already knew in, you know, five years old. Wow. Oh, and four. four. Oh yeah. You were four at four years old. Sorry. <laughs> so like, if you think about it, we limit children on what they are able to learn by sending them to a place that tells them what they can learn and when they can learn it. That was last year. That was last year. And now you have the ability to then teach a child anything. But not only that, it's is that since we started using TechnoTutor, her processing ability is through the roof. And what does that mean? I can literally talk to Aria about any topic and she will understand. How do I know she understands? Because she will start telling me, hey, so I think what you're saying is, and she'll give me examples. So that's how I know I'm like, wow, like she can really process this stuff and she's only five years old. So I don't. I can then begin to talk to her and I'm like, okay, honey, well, we don't do that, right? I can say, well, this is the reasons and the consequences of why we don't do that. And she'll understand and I don't have to, you know, the whining and the and the bribing and the none of that happens because she's able to process information just by using this one tool. And also she's not being told what she can learn and when she can learn it. She tells me what she wants to learn. She also, um, my husband works in construction and she gets to see the buildings come up. So then she's like, well, I want to know how things are built. So then we learn how things are built, like from the beginning. And then she's like, okay, well, let's learn about how other buildings work in the world. So now we're learning about different structures that happen throughout the world. And we went to a muse uh, museum nearby. Uh, Museum of Art and they had these paintings and the lady is asking all the you know four and five year olds uh, you know what the painting is and what they think and she starts talking about well I think this is more of a Chinese place because of the blah blah and she starts like showing how and wow. the lady wow like how did you know that <laughs> you know because she's not limited to what she can learn yeah that's incredible and did you think that in the beginning of your journey of homeschooling, like, did you think that this will go that far with her? Like, what were you taught about that in the beginning? Absolutely not. And I will be honest with you, I never thought I was going to homeschool. Um, I had a lot of resistance. And if it wasn't for my husband, I wouldn't be here. Because <laughs> at the beginning, I was the dead on, you know, tough girl that needed to go back and have a job and I have to also have money and you, you I can't be the stay home mom like those people are weak how dare you um and my husband basically he was like listen we need to be realistic here the baby doesn't know anything if something happens to our child she won't be able to tell us she won't be able to get the love she won't be able to get the support she won't every need that she needs is not going to be met and he was like, you really need to think about this. And I struggled with that for a very long time because I had that. And not until I actually put it in my techno tutor did I let go of that. Because even wow. after she was still three, I still tried to like get part-time jobs and I was still trying to get all these things. I, I couldn't let go of the fact that I have to have money. Like I have to, I can't let go of that, right? <laughs> and through techno tutor <laughs> and understanding 
how important that role is, how important for us to be present with them, support them. Because today she could, for example, she was sick and she could be, you know, going through something where she may not want to, I don't know, brush your teeth. And so if you're sending them to school and you really don't have that relationship, you don't know what's going on with them, you don't really have that connection, then it's like, well, you have to brush your teeth either way, right? Well, no, yeah. I understand. So let's let's just talk about why you're not doing that. But I understand what's happening. I'm Can connected. Oh, you can hang it up. Um, so within doing that, and after I put it in Techno Tutor, I understood, wow, I can't send my child to school because look at everything that's happening and forget about the whole everything that's happened after 2020 like prior to that everything that yeah. they're being taught everything that they're picking up the characters the personalities that they are building just because of the people that they are around and to do that to a child is just plain abusive <laughs> i'm sorry but it is because if you know that that's happening why would you let it happen yeah yeah i agree yeah, so that, this is such a good point. It's like, and, and it's good that you're sharing like kind of the honest part of the story because I think every woman feel this way. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I want, and it's 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 kind of like everyone is conflict between those two points. Like I want what's best for my child, but I also want to be like a strong independent woman that succeed in the system <laughs> because that, that's what society is program, programming people do. So like we, like we have to kind of like to, fight this programming to do what, what's best for a child at the end. But uh, I, I really appreciate you sharing that specific story. Um, is there any, anything else you would like to share about the uh, kind of like a uh, change that you or Aria have experienced? Uh, I remember like you mentioned that uh, like your confidence level have, have changed a lot, like your uh, interaction with other people. I remember you make a video about that. Can you share yeah. a little bit about that? Like I, I've seen her, I I met uh, I met both of you uh, in Texas, and I've seen she's like one of the most confident child I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I mean, from when you saw her in Texas to today, it's been like <laughs> I'm bigger. Yeah, she is bigger. <laughs> uh, but you're gonna show them how tall you are. Ooh. Super tall. Okay. Um. So. And this is something that I, and I, I didn't realize it until later, why I struggle with it as much as until I process it. That's your foot. Thank you. Um, with techno tutor. And that was that, um, the anxiety point. Okay. So remember how I said at the beginning, our, our children are picking up everything from us. If they're spending their time with us whatever we don't solve within ourselves, they're just like, oh, this is normal. So I'm just going to take it on for myself, right? And I started seeing at the age of three, there was just major anxiety. And for me, I'm like, she's only three. Like, why? She shouldn't be here. So, you know, I would, yes, ma'am. Why did it, they keep making some way super stupid for buy more Characters and they keep making them more scary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, at the beginning, when she was three, we would go to like a homeschooling class or a park or things where she would interact with other children. Yeah. And every time she would go up to a child, okay, or a, a person she would run away from, uh, completely like she'll just either stay still like this, like she'll pretend nobody's talking or she'll run away to children. She would go up to them and she would stand next to them and then just stay there. And then when she realized they weren't acknowledging her, she would start crying. And I could see her frustration mainly because I knew what that felt like mm -hmm. because that was me. Right. But then I was suffering as in, Oh, my poor child is going through that. But the reality is, is that, I was seeing myself and yeah. it's like, like I did that, you know, yeah. <laughs> like I caused that, that's me. And I really had to start working that. And I made it my priority that that had to be something I had to get over because it was so embedded within me and it had been completely part of my life and my personality and who I was that it was more that I had to walk through. So I started supporting her and Mind you, she was three and 
I one day was like, okay, we can't do this anymore. So at night, I just went through my techno tutor and then I did my writing and I just like, okay, we can't do this anymore. And the next day it happened again. And I had a conversation with her, just like I'm having a conversation with you. And I explained how we stay in the mind. And when we stay in the mind and we participate in these things, we're not going to be able to physically, okay, to physically take action to the things that we want to do. And she was like, okay. And I was like, I'm just going to say this, but I'm probably nothing's going to happen. And that day after we left there, have that conversation, we were at like a park or something. I had to go to an appointment and she started talking to the person up front and she started telling her how she realized that she had this fear of talking to people, but that she no longer had this fear because she understood everything we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Like that was my, oh my God, techno tutor works, (laughs) you know, because she was three. (laughs) And a, a three-year-old saying things like that is not something you see every day because yeah. usually people express through different ways, um, not yeah. through words. Um, so that was the first part. And then we had to walk through the point of talking to people, the way we talk to people. So she started learning about tonality and like how you get, you can uh, uh, persuade someone to do something and, or, you know, tell someone directly, like you have to stop doing this. And little by little by little, she just started transforming into this child who can go up to anyone now where I'm like, okay, well, you know, like, you know, slow it down. Cause like sometimes <laughs> we'll, go and then we'll spend hours cause she's just talking to everybody. And I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> right. But it's from anyone before. And I can tell you this, cause I've worked with many families. When you see your child go through that, you immediately go through, give them pills, put them through this therapy psychologist because they're having, and they're probably going to be told that they're in the spectrum somehow. Uh It had nothing to do with the spectrum. It had nothing to do with drugs. It had everything to do with how I experienced anxiety and how I had transferred over to her. And that's all she knew in that moment. Hmm. And the moment I was able to work it through me, she was able to work it through her and I was able to support her to do so effectively. This is awesome. Okay. Yeah. I wonder like if people that are watching this are realizing how profound this is and like it's simple but it's profound right. and, uh, and like I can imagine like a parents uh, like virtually all the parents experience this point of like oh they see the pattern and they know that it's coming from them and then they feel bad for it and they beat themselves up because they don't have the tool to correct it so then then they that's when they rely on like just working on the symptom, like you mentioned, they're gonna like use medication and all that stuff because they want, like, they want their kids to thrive, but they don't understand what is causing the problem. So, like, I'm so glad you shared that, so people can can see like this is actually real. It's like, oh, you have this, but now this is so empowering to have the ability to solve the problem to the cause, and then like she will never deal with this issue for the rest of her life once it's solved, like it's solved. So this is amazing and Uh, and i can add one more uh like now for example when we go to any homeschooling uh gathering or anything like that uh even we were just at a a party and every time any adult asks questions like before she would just stay quiet like she wasn't even in the room now she's the first one me 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 i know (laughs) you know like Because there's that confidence, right? Yeah. Like before you may know or you don't want to be embarrassed or what if somebody thinks this or what the other kids say? Because that's all impulse all the time. Yeah. Whereas her, I don't care what they think, but I think I know the answer or I do know the answer. But I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool to watch. That's amazing. Yeah. Like to develop that LT self-esteem in the child. I think that's what every parents are like looking for. Um. So like you've already you you are already at a point where you're beyond your wildest expectation in terms of like the results that you've seen uh so where do you see yourself like let's say in 10 to 15 year like you and Adia if you keep applying yourself in this process oh my god definitely (laughs) building community and this is something that I talked with her the other day Uh um just your perspective And it's something I tell a lot of people, especially um, if you are in self-reflective, I've talked to people in self-reflective and say, oh, well, I need to work on myself first. And um, I explain how we are in, we're in our world, in our mind. 
And so we can't see farther than that because we're stuck in our own thoughts and what's happening here. But when you start clearing that out and that's now away, then you can begin to see the long vision and you can begin to have vision to how we can make the world a better world, right? Uh, specifically doing what is best for everyone. And I was actually talking to Arya about this the other day, how our goal is to make sure that everybody can be every specifically also children uh, can have the same opportunity as her kids. She's not special in any way. It's just that she's has this specific tool that has supported her to then be the best that she can be. And imagine if I hadn't, if I had started before, and I hadn't still need to walk so many consequences with her, she'd probably be even in a different place, right? So every child should be able to have, and that is the vision is that everybody can have that, that everybody can have the same opportunity and then just creating that community. And um, if I can just add this um, story, after we had that conversation, um, the next night she said to me, you know, can I help you, you know, uh, talk to everybody about tech to tutor? And I was like, sure. Like, you know, that's because she, I'm, I'm thinking like, she just hears me. So maybe like, that's just something she wants to do. So that week it was spring break and there was so many kids in the neighborhood and they all ended up in my garage. Um, Cause she always just tends to call people in and then like, there's a whole bunch of kids. Um, and at night when we went to go to bed, she said to me, you know, I actually talked to four different girls about techno tutor and how I use it and how it's, and what I do and how I don't have to go to school. And like, she was like, this is her and how she was able to express that. And we have to have that vision for everyone because it's not just me fixing myself and my kid and saying, oh, well, now we live a better life and good luck with that. And I hope that maybe one day you realize it's yours. It's not like, no, this is what we can do and we need everybody to have it. And that's the vision for 15, 10 years. Amazing, that's very well said. Uh, one more question for you. It's like, uh, it's a tough one. No, no, seriously. Uh, <laughs> What would be your only advice, one advice, uh, to someone that feels stuck in life and why? Um, are you okay being the person you are today in five years? Just ask yourself that question and you'll be able to answer. Like, I don't even, you would know if you're okay or not. And if you're okay, that's fine. And if you're not okay, then you need to reach out to David or Carol Ann or or me, and then you need to get techno tutor. Awesome. Well, and also, if well, I can say that, if you're a parent and you're still accepting and allowing this, then know that the consequences will be later and it'll be tougher, tougher to mm -hmm. fix them then than if you do it now. So they shouldn't wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, my daughter's five and I'm already walking a lot of consequence. I'm already having to walk her back through all the things I've already created. Imagine if you know you now have a child from one to seven or, or anything like that. And then you wait until they're a teenager and they're showing up with all of the characters and all of the behaviors and everything they learned that you taught them. And then now you're like, oh, well, what do I do with my child? Yeah. You have the opportunity now. It's not tomorrow. It's today. Yeah. And then they yeah, ate you and they don't listen to you. So it's going to be even harder to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to conclude on that. Uh, that was really awesome. I'm really glad you share all of that. It was really good. Um, so if people want to reach out to you to know more, either about the enter your own story or people that are interested about homeschooling, but they don't feel they have the ability to do, uh, parents that are having uh, kids that are struggling with certain thing that they don't really know what to do can they reach out to you absolutely and um i'm either as melissa valley on facebook instagram all the good stuff <laughs> and or um at the comp then i'm gonna come my company is my growing roots so i post either there or in my personal do you have the same information so awesome so we're gonna put the the link for your my growing roots page and your personal page as well and your Instagram and all that stuff. So people can, can reach out to you. So yeah, thank, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was amazing. I really appreciate everything that you share. Eric, Caroline, do you have any 
one last word. Yeah, thanks, Melissa, for coming. It was very amazing. Uh, it was a real pleasure to have you and like uh, everything you accomplished so far is very impressive well we know that the tool works it's not like impressive but it is impressive in a way so it's just it's cool to see like what can be done for everybody so thank you so much for today thank and, you for uh, having me. thank you goodbye everyone bye everybody